The simple and delicate woman truly thought that Lord Sri Krishna, their beloved husband, followed them and was dominated by them. They were unaware of the extent of the glories of their husband, as the atheists are unaware of him as a supreme controller. Right. So this is how Lord Krishna <clears throat> uh, Dwarka. And it says like so you know when the Lord descends, he does along with his interest inter to display a complete picture of the transcendental world, where pure love and devotion for Lord prevail without any mundane tinge of Lord in it all, creation of the Lord. Right? So when such devotees of the Lord are all liberated souls, perfect representation of the marginal or internal potency in complete navigation of the influence of the external potency. So what it's saying essentially is when the Lord Krishna is arriving, you know, he comes with all the uh, transcendental uh, transcendental world. And that's the whole picture uh, which he comes with. So, Thus, this ends the Bhakti Vedanta purpose of the first canto, 11th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Lord Krishna's entrance into Dwarka. Uh, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Yeah. jai. Hare Krishna, Anilji. <clears throat> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Sorry, thoda late ho gaya, join karne mein. Okay. So now that we have completed 11th chapter, which is great, you know, together, Gyara Adhyaya ho chuke apne. And uh, yeah. it's a one minute Krishna Istuti. We'll do that Istuti since it's end of the Adhyaya. And then we will continue reading uh -huh. chapter 12. So can you see this? Yeah. yeah.
So chapter 12 is about birth of Emperor Parikshit Maharaj, right? And Parikshit Maharaj was in the womb of Uttara, right? So Uttara is the mother of Parikshit Maharaj. And who is the father of Parikshit Maharaj? Abhimanyu. Abhimanyu. Abhimanyu, right? So Abhimanyu and Uttara. Yeah. And so if you remember, like what has happened is we saw when Ashwatthama launched the Brahmastra, Lord Krishna saved him. And at that point, you know, the whole Srimad Bhagavatam took us in, a, in another direction at that point in time, right? We started reading about how Maharani, Maharani Kunti then was praying to Lord Krishna. Then <clears throat> they came to the Kurukshetra where Bhishma Pitama was giving all the religion, religious education to Pandus, and then how Bhishma Istuti, we, we saw that beautiful Bhishma Istuti, right? And then how Lord Krishna left Hastinapur, we saw his Istuti there, and then he arrived in Dwarka. So now we are going back to where we left it, where Parikshit Maharaj uh, is about to be born. So let's do uh, text one. <clears throat> Amukesh. Ashwatthano Prasistin Brahmashishno Rutar Jesa Uttraya Hato Garb Ishno Jeevataha Puna. The sage Sonak said, The womb of Uttra, mother of Maharaj Parikshit, was spoiled by the dreadful and invisible Brahmastra weapon released by Ashwatthama, but Maharaj Parikshit was saved by the Supreme Lord. Hare Krishna. Hey Krishna, right? So Sonak Muni, who is the head in Nemi Saranya, so he's now reminding uh, Goswami Ji Maharaj, right? He's coming back. So what happened there? I mean, Maharaj Parikshit, Ishena Jivita hai puna hai. Vomb mein Bhagwan Sri Krishna ne Maharaj Parikshit ko jivit kiya. Brahmastra se bachaya. Tasya Janma Mahabuddhe Karmani Cha Mahatmana Nidhanam Cha Yathe Vasis Tasya Pretya Gatavan Yatha How was the great Emperor Parikshit, who was a highly intelligent and great devotee, born in that womb? How did his death take place and what did he achieve after his death? Hare right. Krishna. So all the rishis are asking like end to end what happened. Right? End to end about the Parikshit Maharaj like from born to until the death. Tadidam Shrotu Michamo Gaditum Yadi Manese Bruhi Naha Shraddhananam Yasigyan Madachukaha. We are respectfully want to hear about him, Maharaja Parikshit, to whom Sukadeva Goswami imparted transcendental knowledge. Please speak on this matter. Hare Krishna. Hey Krishna. So they are requesting to whom? Swami. So, Sud Goswami Ji Maharaj, right? He is the one who is reciting. So they are asking Sud Goswami Ji Maharaj that they want to hear everything about Maharaja Parikshit. 
and they know Subdev Goswami Ji is the one who imparted transcendental knowledge to Maharaj Parikshit. Sooth Uvaj, a people Madhar Maraj, Pritra Vid, Raja Dhanam Praja, Nispriham Sarve Kamiksham, Kamiksha, Krishna Pad, Krishna Pad Nusevaya. Sri Sud Goswami said, Emperor Yudhishthir administered generously to everyone during his reign. He was exactly like his father. He had no personal ambition and was freed from all sorts of all sorts of sense gratification because of his continuous service unto the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. All right, so Sud Goswami is continuing Srimad Bhagavatam and where Imperial Yudhishthir, you know, he was the big samrat of the whole world. But he had no personal ambition. And Niya Spriya Sarva Kame Bhai. So he was free from all sorts of sense gratification. And why would that happen? Is because of Krishna Pada Anu Sevya. Hmm? Krishna Bhagwan ke Charan Kamal me Seva Karne se he was free of all sorts of sense gratification. Sampudha Krati Voloka Mahi Shri Bhrataro Mahi Jambu Dvipadi Patyam Cha Yashashwa Cha Tri Divam Gatam so news even reached the celestial planets about Maharaj Yudhishthir's worldly positions. The sacrifices by which he would attain a better destination. His queen, his stalwart brothers, his extensive land, his sovereignty over the planet Earth, his fame, etc. Right? So about Maharaj Yudhishthir's <coughs> positions and all the kingdom, it even reached to the all celestial planets. For this place, you know, Kunte Kama Suras Para Mukunda Manaso Dvija Ade Jarur Mudam Raj Ragya uh, Ragya. O oh, Brahmanas, the opulence of the king was so enchanting that the denizens of heaven aspired for it. But because he was absorbed in the service of the Lord, nothing could satisfy him except the Lord's service. All right, so I'm searching again, Maharaj Yudhishthir, right? So his opulence was so much, right, that even people living in heaven were aspiring for it. But what is this saying? Like even after all that, but Maharaj Yudhishthir himself was absorbed in the service of the Lord. So nothing will satisfy him except the Lord's service. So that's pretty interesting actually. Let's... Uh, <clears throat> Archana, you want to continue reading this? Um, there are two things in the world which can satisfy living things. When one is material and engrossed, he is satisfied only by sense gratification. But when one is liberated from the conditions of the material modes, he is satisfied only by rendering loving service for the satisfaction of the Lord. Of the Lord, right? So it is clearly that if you are not liberated, then you enjoy into all those other material senses. But once you start realizing your soul, okay, then what happens? Then you are only satisfied and you get the immense blissful pleasure only by doing the loving service for the satisfaction of the Lord. <clears throat> and it also mentions here actually that what is this whole spiritual hunger about? You know? 
So, Ajay, do you want to read? I'm having some. Okay. Can you see? <laughs> yeah, I can't. Oh. All right, till Ajay comes back. Can you see Ajay? Yeah, I can't scroll it down somehow. Oh, okay, okay. All right, no worries. Can you, I scroll it up? Uh, Hmm. All right, Nisha, do you want to read? Yeah, I just can fix your stuff. Anyway. This hunger is actually for spiritual food, spiritual shelter, spiritual defense, and spiritual sense gratification. These can be obtained in the association of the Supreme Spirit, Lord Sri Krishna, and therefore one who has them cannot be attached by the so-called food, shelter, defense, and sense gratification of the material world, even if they are relished by the denizens of the heavenly planets. Therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita 8.16, it is said by the Lord that even in the topmost planet of the universe, namely the Brahma Loka, where the duration of life is manipulated, no. sorry, multiplied by millions of years by earth recalculation, one cannot satisfy his hunger. Such hunger can be satisfied only when the living being is situated in immortality, uh, which is attained in the spiritual sky far and far above the Brahma Lok. In the association of Lord Mukunda, the Lord who awards his devotees the transcendental pleasure of liberation. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, right? So even Bhagavad Gita and everywhere, you know, it says that, um, you know, from the highest planet in the material world, Brahma Lok, we, we saw those 14 Loks, right? Down to the lowest, which is the Pata Lok, uh, Prithvi is the, in the middle. All are places of misery where in repeated birth and death takes place. So whether it's 100 years or million years, the birth and death will still happen. But one who attends to my abode, O son of Kunti, never takes birth again. Yeah. That's pretty interesting um, uh, thing, right? So, and, and the Mukun Lord awards his devotees his transcendental pleasure of liberation. Matu Garb Gato Viraha Satada Brigu Nandan Dardash Purusham Kanchi Daham Mano Astra Se Jasa O son of Brigu Shanka, when the child Parikshit, the great fighter, was in the bomb of his mother, Uttara was and was suffering from the burning heat of Brahmastra thrown by Akshatama. He could observe the Supreme Lord coming to him. Hare Krishna. Yeah, so like Parikshit Maharaj was already transcendental, right? So even though he's small in the womb, he could observe the Supreme Lord coming to him. Right? When when he's burning with the Brahmastra, because Brahmastra, Brahmastra, no one can stop it. Right? So Parikshit Maharaj, he could observe the Supreme Lord coming to him. Anilji? Angustha matra mamalam spurt rat purat molinam api vidarshanam shamam tadi das sata machutam. He, the Lord, was only thumb high, but he was all transcendental. He had a very beautiful, blackish, infallible body, and he wore a dress of lightning yellow and a helmet of blazing gold. Thus, he was seen by the child, Hare Krishna. So he's getting darshan of Lord Sri Krishna, right? 
before he is being born na a previous darshanam shyamam nisha श्रीमद दीर्घ चतुर्बाह तप्त कांचन कुंडल शतजाक्ष गाणी महात्म सर्वोदिश परिभ्रम तो मुलका गदामुहु द लॉर्ड वाज एनरिच्ड विद फोर हैंड्स इयरिंग्स विद मॉल्टन गोल्ड एंड आईज ब्लड रेड विथ फ्यूरी as he as he loitered about his club constantly encircled him like a shooting star hari krishna all right so he's describing how lord sri krishna was um okay chu astra teja swagadaya niharam निहारम इव गोपते विधमंत भगवान धर्म गुब विभु मिश्रो दशमास चाइल्डीम लॉर्ड पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड दुपर सोर ऑफ एवरी वन एंड प्रोटेक्टर ऑफ द राइचस हू स्ट्रेच इन ऑल डायरेक्शन एंड हू इज अनलिमिटेड बाई टाइम एंड स्पेस दिस अपियर एट वंस हरे कृष्णा Right, one child. So Lord Sri Krishna saved Parikshit Maharaj, and then Satreva Antar Dhade Hari Hai. Then hmm? Antar Dham Ho Gaya, yeah, disappeared at once. Hmm? So that's how Lord Sri Krishna protected Parikshit Maharaj. So I think we'll stop it here today. Um, and uh, hello, Ajay. Yes, come back. Hi guys. Yeah, any question? I think we'll stop it here today. I will continue um, listening to uh, our Damodarast come. She left last time, hmm? and uh, let me just bring it out. It's really nice, right? We completed eleven chapters. Gyara <laughs> adhyay apne complete ho gaye. So I know slowly and slowly, and we are back to Sri Mad Bhagavatam. Which is really nice. It's really nice to read Sri Mad Bhagavatam in the Kartik month. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a genie.
Namaste, 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 Namaste,